We appreciate you being here. It is Tuesday, Travel Tuesday, rather, where we start daydreaming about that getaway with a heavy dose of reality. Joining me right now is that dose of reality, CBS travel editor and longtime friend of the stream, Peter Greenberg. Mr. Greenberg, thanks for coming on to the show once again. And where are you? It seems like uh, uh, there's a king behind you somewhere. There is. Actually, I'm in Shreveport, Louisiana today at the old Municipal Auditorium. The very first time when Elvis played here and the words Elvis has left the building were uttered back in 1955. And this was his dressing room. And you are there right now. Fascinating. Before I actually get to my first question, I want to have a almost a prequel question. Alaska Airlines, the hot topic of the day, um, a pilot who was on board, not piloting, um, a, a, apparently tried to shut the thing down mid-air. You know, post 9-11, we know the rules, no one really has access to the cockpit, but pilots, is that the only reason he could have been in there because he was a pilot or what, what you know, what you right. know and what you know historically, shake this thing out for me. Sure, cockpit access post 9-11 was limited to only flight and cabin crew. Uh, of course, reinforced locks, reinforced doors. Uh, he was, uh, of course, uh, permitted to be up there as an off-duty captain. Uh, jump seating happens all the time as a courtesy on every airline. In this particular flight going from Everett, Washington to San Francisco, for reasons where, that remain unanswered, uh, this pilot sitting in the jump seat reached forward and tried to hit the two fire suppression handles for the engines, mm. uh, which, had he done so, would have shut the engines down. And wow. once you activate the fire suppression systems, it's not easy to, to reactivate and restart the engines. Luckily, both cabin, both cockpit crew members were in. They subdued him. They got him out of the cockpit. And the rest of the story, most of you already know, he was arrested when the plane was diverted and then landed in uh, Portland, Oregon. And something else. And that, that jump seat you talk about, uh, having a pilot in the family, that's located like right in the cockpit, right? It's, 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 it's in the back. It's a, basically a seat that flips down. And it's a pilot basically trying to get from point A to point B for some reason. It could be a pilot. It could be an FAA registered pilot mm -hmm. who's doing a check of the pilots. It can be anybody who's authorized by the FAA to be up there, but primarily it's pilots. Yeah. And so depending on the plane, there could be one jump seat. There could be as many as three. Okay. Uh, all right. So now a new report shows O'Hare lagging behind other major airports uh, as we've rebound from the pandemic. Chicago Re Re Tribune reporting American Airlines is actually shifting its focus to other cities because they're looking for growth. They're not seeing it here. We're years behind in a rebuild and rehab of terminals and things have been a muck out there. Um, is this portend worse news to come potentially for O'Hare? Well, it's not just O'Hare, it's many major airports as the airlines, the, the, the three major airport airlines, American, United and Delta, are basically ending service to a lot of small cities in America. Uh, okay. You know, out of Chicago, that would be the American Eagle flights all over the all region. Right. Uh, they, they, they're going for longer haul, higher yield flights. And when you do that, then the amount of flow coming into Chicago decreases because people are not connecting. They're, they're overpassing Chicago on other airlines. They're not, not connecting in Chicago. This is happening in Atlanta. It's happening in, in Dallas. And it's happening in Detroit. Interesting. We were talking a little jump flights, a little with a one day of flight, American Eagle to Traverse City, Michigan, or Muskegon, Michigan, right. or Moline, or what have you. It's interesting. Okay, so Amsterdam raising its tourism tax from eight to eleven dollars per day. Uh, this is to help prevent over tourism, as places like Amsterdam and Venice are struggling with too many visitors. Uh, look, uh, this is. Just a few euros uh, probably won't keep too many people away. But is it time for cities, and you, you travel a lot, and you probably see and have seen over your years of travel, you used to be like, man, Venice used to be beautiful. Now it's just, you know, it's like, uh, uh, it's like people are at the Louvre looking for, you know, portraits of dogs playing poker. You know, things have changed, right? So, um, you know, is it time, though? It seems like that's really nickel-diming the, the mom-pop tourists. Is it time for them, if they want to make a change, to go over the bigger groups or cruises? Or, or, or How do you wrap your head around this for me? 
Well, the numbers game is getting a little little tough to handle. You know, Venice says they don't want to be another Barcelona. Barcelona says they don't want to be another Athens. Yeah. We had a situation in Athens where 30,000 people a day in 100 degree plus weather were tra- climbing up the hill to see the Acropolis. Wow. The Greek officials didn't know how to deal with it. So they've now instituted a new rule, which, of course, is just a stopgap where they're going to limit the number of people going up that hill to 20,000. That's still too many. Yeah. In Venice, they're putting about a five euro tax for anybody who can't prove they have a hotel reservation that night. They're trying to stop the day trippers. In Amsterdam, they're not just increasing the tourism tax, they're moving where cruise ships can dock. Some some locations are, are limiting the number of cruise ships that can be in port at any one time. And this goes on and on and on until destinations understand true destination management and how to extend a season to 12 months a year. This problem is not going to go away. Fascinating how the one city doesn't want to be the one city doesn't want to be the one city doesn't want to be Athens, which, of course, is, you know, dealing with major name me three places that 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 aren't on on that cliched list of over burdened with tourists that you love in europe well that's a problem and look you're going to deal with some of the smaller countries like estonia and slovenia Liechtenstein, not overrun beautiful manageable Mm -hmm. uh and and for people who understand the the train links over there uh, look what france has done they just basically eliminated short haul flights out of Paris to encourage people to take the train and they're doing the right thing. That's a brilliant idea. Get out to the countryside, see the secondary and tertiary cities that have not yet been overrun. OK, very quickly here. Uh, you are never in the U.S., you never basically in our hemisphere. You happen to be in our neighborhood, basically, last weekend. Uh, you were in Madison, Wisconsin, home of the Badgers. You a Badger yourself? I mean, what were the you're on the football field? We've going to throw a picture. yet. Were they naming uh, a building after you or what was going on? No, they will hardly name a building after me. But yes, I owe my entire career to the University of Wisconsin. I'm a proud Badger. And if you saw that picture, if you're putting it up there, I'm wearing my letter jacket. There I am. Wow, Um, still fits. And you may want to know, it still fits. And you may want to know what I lettered in. I will tell you in a very short answer. When it came time for me to graduate from the university many, many years ago, I wasn't planning on going to graduation. I'd already gotten a job working for Newsweek magazine. And the dean said to me, are you coming to graduation? I said, no, you must come. We have something for you. And they forced me to go to graduation. And when I got there, they gave me this jacket, a letter jacket, the original letter jacket. And I asked what I had lettered in. And without hesitation, their response was non-attendance. Oh, that is, that's true? This is true? It is absolutely true, uh, and I wear that letter jacket proudly every time I go to a Wisconsin oh, football gosh, I love which that. I do every single year. All right. Uh, that's why we love you, uh, in part for your yarns, Peter Greenberg, uh, Wisconsin Badger, CVS travel editor, friend of the stream. Uh, we appreciate having you on. Safe travels. We'll see you in a week, my friend. You got it.